A parallel plate capacitor is formed from two solid conducting planes that are separated by a distance d, where one plate has a positive uniform surface charge density equal to positive sigma, while the other plate has a uniform negative surface charge density equal to negative sigma. Show that the magnitude of the electric field at a point between the plates of this parallel plate capacitor is given by the surface charge density sigma divided by the permittivity of free space epsilon naught. Let's begin by sketching our capacitor. Our capacitor consists of two plates separated by a distance d. Now, in fact, let's go ahead and just space these plates further apart so we have more room to visualize. Now, these plates, they are separated by a distance of d. Now, in this picture, I'm exaggerating the separation distance. However, let's assume that the separation distance is small when we compare it to the size of the plates. By making that assumption, that is basically considering that when we take a point in between the plates, if we are saying the separation distance is small compared to the plate size, or in comparison to the plate size, then any point we take in between the plates can be considered to be far from the edges. Now, the reason for that is, is we could then approximate these plates as very large, infinite planes of charge. Now, with that assumption, we know that these plates will then produce a uniform electric field because we've showed previously that for an infinite plate of charge, an infinite sheet of charge, that infinite sheet of charge has an electric field that follows planar symmetry. The top plate is positively charged with a surface charge density of sigma, while the bottom plate is negatively charged with a surface charge density of negative sigma. Our goal is to find the electric field at a point in between the plates. To do this, let's first focus on the electric field for one of the plates. Let's look at the top plate. So the top plate has a uniform positive surface charge density. We want to calculate the electric field at a point in between the two plates, so I'm going to take that point to be, to be this point right here, the point we are interested in. Being a very large plate in comparison to the distance away from the point, we could essentially say that that point is far from the edges, which means that according to that point, the electric field is going to be uniform. Being a source of positive charge, we know that this, the electric field due to this large plane of charge will point away with planar symmetry. Now, what that planar symmetry essentially says is that the electric field is uniform. Being uniform, I know that the electric field has a constant magnitude above and below the plates. So regardless of how far away we are from this plane of charge, the magnitude of the electric field is going to be constant because we're making the approximation that this plate is infinitely large in comparison to the point. And we're assuming that the point is very close to the, to the plane. Now with that said, to find the electric field at that point, we could use the fact that this plane of charge has planar symmetry and Gauss's law. So Gauss's law, remember, says that the total electric flux through a closed surface, so a surface that encloses a volume, 
is equal to the amount of charge enclosed by that bounding surface over epsilon naught. Because this, this plane of charge has planar symmetry, let's create a Gaussian box. And my box is going to be a cylindrical box. And this Gaussian box is going to enclose our charge and will span above and below the plane. So there we have our cylindrical box. Now, Gauss's law says that our Gaussian box, our Gaussian cylinder, needs to enclose a certain amount of charge. And this amount of charge is going to create an electrical flux through each surface of the cylinder. Now, we have a top surface of the cylinder. This top surface of the cylinder will have an area vector, which I'm going to label as A sub t. The cylinder has a side. The area of the side of the cylinder I'll label as A sub s. And the cylinder also has a bottom. And the area of the bottom of the cylinder I'll label as A sub t. By identifying the different surfaces allows us to break up the surface integral into three different integrals for each one for each of these surfaces. For example, the surface integral of the electric field through the top surface added to the surface integral of the electric field through the side surface added to the surface integral of the electric field through the bottom surface. And I see earlier I labeled the, the area vector of the bottom surface, a sub t. I meant to label that a sub b, b for bottom. So the sum of these three electric fluxes must be equal to the amount of charge enclosed by our Gaussian surface over epsilon naught. Now, as we've learned previously, we know that the electric flux through the side of this Gaussian cylinder is going to be zero because the angle between the electric field through the side and the area vector through the side is 90 degrees. And the dot product of two vectors that are separated by 90 degrees is equal to zero. So now let's rewrite our integrals. So the electric flux through the top surface, I'm going to use the version of the dot product that has the cosine in it. So this is the electric flux through the top surface plus the electric flux through the bottom surface. And this is equal to the amount of charge enclosed over epsilon naught. Now, we know the electric field is uniform. So the electric field through the top surface is equal to the magnitude of the electric field at the bottom surface. Let's just go ahead and call that E. Also, the area of the top cap of the cylinder is equal to the area of the bottom cap of the cylinder. And let's call that A. So since we've been dealing with differentials, we could say then that dA through the top is equal to dAB of the bottom is just equal to dA. And we should note that the angle between the electric field at the top surface and the electric field at the bottom surface, the angle between the electric field and the area of those respective surfaces is zero degrees. Cosine of zero degrees is one. Putting that all together allows us to express these integrals more simply. This becomes the integral through the top surface of 
E D A plus, well, we have the integral through the bottom surface. So that is E D A as well is equal to how much charge we are enclosing over epsilon naught. This allows us to write that 2 times the E magnitude of the electric field dA is equal to the amount of charge enclosed over epsilon naught. So this is 2 EA, the product of the electric field and the area of the top or the bottom, is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And this means that the electric field is equal to the amount of charge that we are enclosing over 2 times epsilon naught times the area of the top or the bottom cap. Well, the problem is we were given the surface charge density sigma, but we weren't given the charge Q. We don't know what that is. But we do know this. This is a uniform surface charge. And this uniform surface charge has a density equal to the amount of charge dq over an area. So charge per unit area. So this is the definition of surface charge density. If it is a uniform surface charge, then this is equivalent to the amount of charge over the area. So in other words, Q enclosed is equal to the surface charge density times the area of our top or bottom caps, which means we could write the magnitude of the electric field is equal to sigma A over 2 times the permittivity of free space times the area. Now notice the area enclosed by the Gaussian surface is equal to the area of the top and bottom caps of our cylinder. So those areas cancel out. And this now gives us the electric field, the magnitude of the electric field, at any point above or below this very large plane of charge is equal to sigma over 2 epsilon naught. Let's apply this to both plates. We now know that, that the value of the magnitude of the electric field due to a very large plane of charge. We just showed for a single plane of charge that electric field has a magnitude of equal to the surface charge density over 2 epsilon naught. So let's do this for the point we are interested in. We know the electric field due to the upper plate is pointing straight down at that point and due to the upper plate, that value is a value of sigma over epsilon, over 2 epsilon naught for the electric field due to the upper plate. And I'll just call the upper plate T. So T for the upper and B for the lower. Now, the bottom plate also is contributing the same amount of electric field at the point we're interested in. So I'll just draw that right to the side. And actually, let's go ahead and add these two head to tail. So the contribution of the bottom plate is the same contribution and in the same direction as the electric field due to the upper plate. And that's because these fields are equal in magnitude, opposite in charge. Electric fields point away from positive charges and towards negative charges. Since the point we're interested in is in between both plates, the total electric field at the point in between the plate is just the simple sum 
of the two electric field contributions due to the upper and lower plates. So the electric field at that point in between the plates is given as sigma over 2e plus sigma over 2e. And I shouldn't say e, that is really epsilon naught. I should be embarrassed for saying e. It's epsilon naught. So the total electric field then is just simply sigma, the surface charge density, over epsilon naught. This is the magnitude of the electric field at a point between two plates.